All right, here we are on a Wednesday night. We're so thankful that you came and joined with us at your home. Maybe you're driving right now at work. want to welcome you. My name is Pastor Robert. I'm the associate pastor. We have Pastor Marco, our senior pastor. We haven't done an interview in a long time, so really excited about tonight. Yeah, we're going to be... We're going to be studying, uh, well, what is it, Matthew? Yeah, Matthew chapter Matthew 4. Matthew chapter 4, and we're going to be going through a few verses. But this, what we're going to be seeing today is Jesus in action. Yes. And we're going to see Jesus after he, he, he gets tempted for 40 days. Yeah. He calls his disciples. Yeah. And then he's going to go into action. And we're going to Man. see Jesus in action. And the real question we're going to be asking today, does, did, if Jesus did it then... Can he actually do it now? Which is a really, really big question. Because God's given a scripture, uh, and and the purpose of scripture is is to introduce Introduce us us. to the most important person in the world. His name is Jesus. But the question is, is Jesus even relevant today in a believer's life? So we're going to really dive into that. We're going to see like a real short segment of Jesus' ministry. Uh, It's just a few verses, but he repeats the pattern over and over. That's right. And I really believe that God's still doing that today. Yes. We don't, we don't get to the punchline, but I believe he's doing that today, but That's he's right. doing that through us. Yes, exactly right. We'll be going through the book of Matthew. Right now we're in Matthew chapter 4, um, now verse 23. But before we start, let's pray. Yes. Um, um, it's really a two-part thing to today, Pastor, as well. Yeah. Yeah. I really think people are going to get activated in the power of God. And that's really the title for today, Walking in God's Power. How many, wa- how many want to walk in God's power? How many want to see people healed, delivered, set free by the power of God? Maybe you're at Stater Brothers. You see somebody there and God calls you to pray for some. I would love to see someone healed on aisle nine at Stater. Wouldn't that be awesome? Right. And every, everything that we do, really as Christians, we need to depend on the power yes. of the Holy Spirit. We want people to be saved. Right. We want people to be set free. We want yes. people to experience the joy and the peace of the Lord. All of that is dependent on the power of the Holy Spirit or the power of Jesus' Spirit in us, which is the Holy Spirit. Yes, let's pray. Wherever you're at, just bow your head for a second. Father, we come before you, God, and we thank you. And as we go and look at Matthew chapter 4, God, you administer to our hearts. And there's really a two-part thing here tonight, God. There's maybe somebody watching right now. They need a healing. They need a breakthrough. They need deliverance. We speak healing in the name of Jesus. We speak breakthrough right now. Chains to fall off. Addictions to be broken tonight. For who the sun sets free is free indeed. So we speak freedom. God, open up our hearts, our ears, our minds to understand what the Spirit is saying. Lord, speak to us tonight that we would grow and we would learn tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. amen. So let's start off reading in Matthew chapter 4, verse 23. We're going to be reading, really focus on two scriptures, or, or three scriptures, 20, Matthew chapter 4, verse 23 through 25. Yeah. Let's look and, at, and again, you know, Christian talked about it last week, the few verses before that. Um, he called the disciples, and they left their nets, and they followed Jesus. And now... They're about to get activated in ministry. Matthew 4, 23 to 25. If you have your Bibles, open them up or right there on your app. You can follow along as well. Jesus traveled throughout the region of Galilee, teaching in the synagogues and announcing the good news about the kingdom. And he healed every kind of disease and illness. News about him spread as far as Syria. And people soon began bringing him all who were sick. And whatever their sickness or disease, or if they were demon-possessed or epileptic or paralyzed, he healed them all. Doesn't matter what you're going through today, Jesus can heal. Verse 25, large crowds followed him wherever he went. People from Galilee to ten towns, Jerusalem, from all over Judea, and from east of the Jordan River. Wow. So today we want to just answer that question. How do we walk in Jesus' power or the power of God today? And what we're looking at is that Jesus' lifestyle. How did he do it? And so he calls the disciples. And then what he's doing now, he's showing them, okay, you're going to see something you've never seen your whole life. You've heard about miracles in the Bible. 
but you've never seen it in action. Wow. Let me show you a, how a day in Jesus' ministry looks like. Man, I love it. So how do we walk in the supernatural power of God? If it, just yeah. looking at the first verse, verse yeah. 23. Yeah. Looking at verse 23, and you can write this down. How do we walk in the supernatural power of God? Number one, be available. Be of Jesus was available. Right. He walked the streets. He walked in community. He walked in the region of Galilee. He basically, what Jesus did, he put himself where the needs were. Right. And whenever we put ourselves where the needs are, Jesus will show up and do the miraculous. Wow. You know, that's a, that's a major key. He was available. Yeah. And we also see that he traveled. Yeah. The word travel is a verb. That means he took action. He was intentional. And yeah. I love what you love just it. said. He went where the need was. He wasn't waiting waited for the need to come to him. Yeah. He was on a search for needs, search for people. He went to them. Yes. And anytime we do that as believers, yes. this anytime we go in Jesus' name, yeah. this is a promise. Wherever you go, I will be with you. Man, love it. Love and and, and love a lot it. of times I think we're waiting for the supernatural power to work. And yeah. then I, I want to feel it. <laughs> then I want to do it. No, no, and God no. says, do it. And then you'll see it. That's and it. then you'll feel it. That's Don't it. wait to feel it Amen. to do it. Amen. Do it. And then you will see it. I you'll see it. a confirmation of what you say yes. and you actually do. I you know how many it. times I've done ministry and yeah. I felt it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Like I just tired. I don't want to go, but I show up. Yeah. And then when I show up, God shows up. Yeah. You know, you remind me of the story. I, we went to Pomona. I went to Pomona this week, and I was a little tired. I really didn't, I really didn't feel like going. Um, I, I go weekly um, with, the, with the council member, and we give out food to the people that are in need. Right. And if you make yourself available, God will show up. Right. So I took out food, and I delivered actually 32 um, boxes of food at 32 different houses. One of the, the whole day, and I'm praying this, the whole day I'm praying this, Lord, I just want to reach the one. Because that's our motto, reaching the one in 2021. And I wasn't having any success. I was on my last war, wow. second to the last one. I said, God, bring me that one. So I brought food to a, a trailer park, and her name is um, um, Catherine. And I brought her food, and she comes out, and she starts crying. She goes, I thought no one's going to bring me food today. I thought you guys were coming earlier. And I had a chance to pray with her right there. And she got delivered of loneliness. Wow. I found out that she got diagnosed with stomach cancer. Oh. She had someone taking care of her. She has hardly any food. But I made myself available on that day, and God showed up. She just began to cry and cry. She told me, today I've been healed of loneliness. Wow. I thought I was by myself. I thought that no one really cared Wow, man, and and what and that's after knocking on thirty-two yeah, doors. Thirty-two doors, yeah. Thirty-two 30, doors. 30 on the thirty-second <laughs> door, you meet up, or you meet up. Yeah. She meets up with Jesus on the street. Man, Jesus at her door. Exactly. I said, "Well, right. is Robert Jesus? No, Robert's not Jesus, but Jesus is in him, yeah. and he wanted to touch her, and he wanted to heal her." Now, I want you to understand this: the miracles are up to God. That's right. Our job is to be available and show up and do our part. Right. And then God does the miracles, and he does the miracles he chooses to That's do. That's right. That's so exactly right. You, don't, you didn't know, I want to I want a healer of, uh, with, loneliness of or cancer or, or whatever. Cancer. And God says, no, I want a healer of loneliness. Yeah, that's exactly and we just let right. God do what he needs to do. I love that. So, again, that statement, you want to write this down. If you are willing to put yourself in places where people are in need, you will see miracles. You will see the supernatural power of God. Wow. You, it's kind of like this. You show up, and God shows up. Well, I, I like that because basically what you're saying is, if you want to, I, I want to hate healing ministry. Yeah. We'll just go hang around a whole bunch well, of sick, sick people. people. That's right. Yep. I want to deliver this ministry. <laughs> hang around a whole bunch of demon-possessed people yeah. and just see the power of God move. <laughs> That's exactly now, if right. I want to teach in ministry, hang around hang some out. people that want to learn something, That's and there right. it goes. That's exactly right. And sometimes a little scary. I, and let's, let's be honest. I mean, it's a little scary sometimes to go out. Going to Pomona or maybe going on adopt a block or visiting someone that's sick. What do you say? And I just want to... I, I just want to pray this over you right now. What we need, Pastor Marco, is a spirit uh, of boldness. Oh, man, yeah. 
Once you have boldness come upon you, then you get past those fears. It's not that fear just goes. You're able to go past those fears and show up where God wants you to show up. So I just pray for boldness right now. Everyone watching here in the audience, our worship team, we pray for boldness in the name of Jesus. You're at home right now. Say, Lord, give me your boldness. Give me your boldness, Lord, to go out. And when I go out, Lord, you will show up. Receive the boldness right now because there's such a spirit of timidity that could come over your fear that won't allow you to go out. And we just speak boldness right now in Jesus' uh, name. Let's look at Isaiah 6, 8 that kind oh, of backs yeah. that, back that scripture Yeah, I up. love that scripture. Isaiah 6, 8. Then I heard the Lord asking, whom should I send as a messenger to this people? Who will go for us? And look at this statement. And let's make this. I love this. I said, here I am. Send me. I love that. Here I am. Send me, God. You're at home right now. Say it. Here I am. Send me, God. And when we go out, God follows us. The supernatural power is there. We just have to make ourselves available. We got to stop trying to be supernatural and just be obedient. Just be obedient. Because when you're obedient, the supernatural, the Bible says these signs will follow those who believe. What that right. means is, well, 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 who are those that believe? Love those it. that believe are the ones that when God speaks, they do it. I love it. Those that don't believe, God speaks and they don't do it. I love so it. So if we just follow the Lord's instructions, right. live it out, show up where God tells us to show up, yeah. then signs and wonders will follow us instead That's of it. trying to be supernatural. That's it. That's it. You know, so, so many people are trying to get supernatural school yeah. and maybe you need to be in obedience school. <laughs> Lord, <laughs> I, I, just, I think that's true. That's exactly <laughs> I think right. that's what Jesus did. That's exactly he just right. did what the Father told him to do, that's it. and then it was backed up. That's exactly right. Yeah. And we're talking about going out to the streets, but let's talk about something. Just be available. Be available. Maybe it's yeah. ministry. Sign up for kids ministry. Sign up for youth ministry. Make yourself available. Maybe it's at work. Right. You see a coworker. Hey, can I pray for you? Yeah. I seen that you're down. I, I know you're going through a divorce. Can I just make yourself available everywhere you're at? It's just not going on the streets. It's maybe it's at home with your kids. When's the last time you prayed with your children? There we go. Just make yourself available. Kids, we're going to pray today. Oh, Lord. It's being available yeah. everywhere and anywhere we go. And, and, and we have to be available, and I'll even say this, be intentional. I like that. Be intentional. Be intentional. Jesus was walking and traveling yeah, walking. to specific towns, specific places. Um, this yeah. morning I woke up. And I needed to be intentional. There was, yeah. there was a young lady that, um, her name's Michelle. She might, she's probably watching today. And she, she wrote me a letter. And I put the letter on my, on my desk. Right. And, and she put her phone number. She would just want to talk to me. Wow. And I kept thinking about Michelle for like, it's really been like a week and a half or maybe two yeah. weeks. Yeah. She gave me that letter like two weeks ago to call her. And every time I think about her, I don't have the letter with me. <laughs> so I don't have the phone number. And I go, man, I got to call her. And you know what God told me? He goes, why don't you make a list of everyone you call? Write down their numbers. Make yourself available. Put, right. it, put it in somewhere you have with you all, all day long. That's right. So and then when you have a break intentionally call her. I love it. And so I, I it. it was like five people that got put on my heart to yeah. call. So I did that. And then, you know, God moved on God her heart. She so was, up. you know, she, she was encouraged. I was yeah. encouraged. It, the spirit of God moved That's by right. just being Amen. available to make a call. Wow. Simple like that. That's it. Just make a call. Maybe today after service tomorrow, just make a call. Make yourself available and see what God does. Wow. So how to walk in the supernatural? We're seeing it in scripture. Jesus made himself available. He went out to the community. He went out where the needs are at. And then Jesus did something else. Here's number number two. How do you walk in the supernatural power of God? Number two, preach the good news. Wow. We see that in Matthew 23. Jesus traveled. He healed. And it says here that he He taught, Jesus traveled through the region of Galilee, teaching in the synagogues and announcing announcing the good news. Here's a good statement. God will always confirm the good news with miraculous signs and wonders. God will always confirm the good news with miraculous signs and wonders. Let's look at the structure of the sta- uh, the structure of the sentence. Yeah. It says this, and teaching in the synagogues and, and. announcing the good news about the kingdom 
and wow. he healed every kind of disease and illness. The goes. idea is when we're teaching and preaching the word of God, the and comes with it. Wow. And healing. And wow. deliverance. And miracles. And uh, and a lady that's getting healed from the loneliness. That's it. That's, that's exactly right. And I want you to just look at that. God has called you to teach. Right. God has called you to teach. Say that. God has called me to teach. God has called me to heal. God has called you to heal. God has called us to share the good news. God has called you and I to deliver those that are captive. God has called you to teach. He's called us to teach the good news. He's called us to heal, and he's called us to deliver. We're just ordaining everybody tonight, oh, yeah. Pastor. Yeah, yeah. He goes, and it was good news about the kingdom. About the you kingdom. Know, and I was, we were talking earlier, yeah. and I was saying, Jesus was getting political. Yeah, he was. <laughs> because what he was saying here, what he was saying here, you know, uh, you're complaining about the Roman government. You're complaining about the government uh, that's over uh, you right now. You're, you're not happy with it, right? right? You're not happy the way the government's ran. And what he was saying, anytime it's run by man, wow. It's going to be insufficient. That's right. Anytime it's run by man, there's going to be abuse. Anytime it's run by man, there's going to be favoritism. Anytime it's run by, by man, there's going to be people left out. That's just the way it is. And what he was saying is, you're tired of being under the rulership of man. Yes. And you're also tired of being under the rulership of your depression. You're tired of being under the rulership of Satan. You're tired of being under the rulership of, of your addiction. You're tired of being under the rulership of your past That's abuse right. and hurt. How about this? There's some good news. There's a new king in town. Yeah. There's a new government. You can be a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. Heaven has been, yeah. is knocking at your door. You know what he's saying? Heaven on earth is available for you. I love yes. it. Yes, amen. I How about a new that. government? I love that. Praise God. Be under the kingdom of God. I love kingdom it. Kingdom of God, we see breakthroughs. We see miracles. We see kingdom. healing. In this get. I exactly. Love I love it. Say that again. Under the kingdom of God, you have healing. You have breakthrough. You have deliverance. When we're under the kingdom of God, you have peace. How many want peace? How many want joy? Right? Everybody does. Put yourself under the kingdom of God. Wow. That's powerful. And, you know, and the word kingdom means is that you're under the dominion of the king. Wow. That's all it means. Dominion, the king's rule in your life. But, but, but understand this. The Bible says you cannot serve two masters. All it's saying is you're going to be under the dominion of something or someone. Why not be under the dominion of the king of kings and the Lord of lords, the creator of the universe, your healer, your deliverer, your savior, and experience the kingdom life. Yes, amen. I love it. People, people want to die and go, you know, I, I can't wait to go to heaven. How about having some kingdom, having life, kingdom now. life right now? Power now. Exactly. I love it. I love, I love it. it. So love number it. two, how do we walk in the supernatural? Preach the good news. I, I love yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is the good what's news? What's our responsibility? Yeah, yeah. Preach the good news? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And what's God's like. responsibility? To perform the miracle. Right. It's not on me. All I got to do is preach the good news. Right. If I preach the good news... Jesus, God's responsibility is now to is to God. perform and save the mirror, save people. Man, I love that. Read that in Mark 16, 20. Yeah, Mark, Mark 16, 20. 20. I love this scripture. Mark 16, 20. And the disciples went everywhere. Where did they go? Everywhere. They did what Jesus did. Exactly what Jesus did. And preached. Exactly what Jesus did. And the Lord worked through them, confirming what they said by many miraculous signs. That's powerful. Man. But look at this. This Jesus pattern. That's right. They they actually carry out the Jesus pattern of ministry. That's it. They That's do exactly it. what Jesus did. They it. went, they taught, they, taught. they preached, and miracles followed. I love it. Same the exact thing. Right there. So Jesus introducing a pattern, and then he says, Now you go out there and do the same pattern. And if you go out there and do the same pattern, same you'll get result. the same results. You know what the problem is? We've broken the pattern. Yes, we have. Yeah. You know what the pattern is now? Yeah. Go to church and go home and act like hell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, act no. like, forget, forget you're a Christian. That's right. No gospel, no teaching, 
And where's signs and wonders and miracles of today? And God's saying, where's the gospel Where in your mouth? I hear gospel. cussing in your mouth. I hear complaining in your mouth. I hear rudeness in your mouth. I hear you're talking about all kinds of politics in your mouth. But I don't hear Jesus in your mouth. I don't hear the good news in your mouth. I don't hear teaching of the word in your mouth. Because signs and wonders follow the teaching of the good news and the word of God. That's it. I love that. I love it. We keep the pattern. We see the same results. That Jesus got and his disciples. I love it. Now you're talking about the good news, Pastor. Yeah, yeah, Someone was saying, what is the good news? Right, yeah. You want to jot this down? Go on. What is the good news? We find this in 1 Corinthians 15, Great 1 through scripture. 4. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, it describes the good news. What is it? Look at the scripture. Now, brothers and sisters, I want you to remember the good news I told you. You receive that good news message and you continue to base your life on it. I love that. Man. That good news, the message you heard from me, is God's way to save you. Wow. But you must continue believing it. If you don't, you believe for nothing. Now, here's the good news. Verse 3. I gave you the message that I received. I told you the most important truths, that Christ died for our sins. That's part of it right there. That's part of it. What's the good news? Jesus Christ died for our sins, yes. as the scriptures say. Here's the second part. part yeah. Jesus, that he was buried. Right. So Jesus died for our sins. He was buried. He was buried. Here's the last part. And was raised to life on the third day, as the scriptures say. That's the good news. So what's the good news? Jesus died on the for cross. Our for our sins. He died for our sins. Buried. He was buried and he rose again to give us eternal life. So if we just preach that message, Jesus came, he died, he died for, for you. Do you want to be forgiven of your sins? Yeah, that's what he came to and do. He's alive. And he's alive. He was buried and he was resurrected. So you could have eternal life. life. If we just stick to that simple message, my gosh, we'll see the power of God over and over. And, and it's funny because when you're witnessing or talking to someone, they'll try to veer off the conversation. Well, what about this? If there was a God, why does all this go wrong? Just stick to the message, stick to the good news, and watch the power of God show up like we've never seen it before. And right. go, yeah. Well, you know, um, in, in, in Matthew chapter 4, verse 24, it says, news about him spread as far as Syria. Wow. And people began bringing to him all who were sick. Wow. And whatever their sickness or disease, uh, it's, no, and whatever their sickness or disease, or if they were demon-possessed or epileptic or paralyzed, he healed them all. Man. But what I love about this portion wow. of scripture about preaching yeah. is that news spread about him. Wow. So how does news spread about Jesus? And this is what I believe. Our job is to not make ourselves famous, but make Jesus, make famous. Jesus famous. We're living in a culture Man. where everybody wants to be famous yeah. Yeah. for the sake of being famous. Yeah. On Facebook. How many followers on, you got? How many how likes many you got? How many? Oh, I got a million <laughs> followers. I, that's fine. But but you're still not saved, and then you're still going to yeah. hell, and you're still. And the sad thing is, sometimes we're we're using those followers to win them to us. Wow. Instead of winning them to Jesus, yes. we're living in a culture today Man. that it's self absorbed. It's yeah. self absorbed. Yeah. Oh yeah. Very it's all so. about me, and and that's we're right. trying to gain followers to us. But they made Jesus famous. Jesus famous. They. They made the news spread about it. You know, it said as far as Syria, Syria was 235 miles away. That's a whole like, that's whole other state somewhere in. Oh yeah, that's yeah. like that's way out of state. 235. That's no social media, no nothing, no news, no CNN, no, no, no airplanes, no airplanes, not no How? mail. <laughs> How did right? that happen? No email. <laughs> How did that no texting? <laughs> None did, of that. How did it happen? Well, people began to share their story what? or their experience with Jesus. Man. See, anytime Jesus want God, see, wow. Jesus is still yes. touching, reaching, healing, yes. delivering, yes. and saving. Amen. But he does it now through, through people. Us. Through every wow. single one of us. Our, we are here. Us. We are here on this earth 
to make Jesus the healer. Jesus the Savior. Amen. Jesus the Deliverer. Jesus the Creator of the universe. Amen. We're here to make him famous. The one that died. The one that was buried. And the one that was resurrected from the dead. That Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Will somebody come out of the closet and let somebody know about Jesus? Yes. Amen. And that's the greatest miracle that the good news does. Yes. The greatest miracle that the good news does is salvation. Hallelujah. Yeah. Blind eyes open and that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Being healed of cancer, that's amazing. Yeah. But there's no greater miracle than a heart transformed. Hallelujah. I love this scripture, Romans 1.16. Yeah, I love it. For I'm not ashamed of this good news about Christ. It is the power of God at work. What's the power of God at work? The gospel. the gospel, the good news about Christ. What's the power? It's the gospel, the good news, the power of God at work. And what does it do? Saving everyone who believes, wow. the Jew first and the Gentile. That's the miracle. Preaching the good news. I remember another story just really quick. I, years back, um, if we were in a car business, I would pass, I lived in Colton, and I would pass a cemetery every day. That's how I got to work. There was a cemetery there on um, Washington Street. And talking about just sharing the good news, I would pass the cemetery, and I'd always see this guy in a pickup truck. He was there pretty much like every day. So one day, the Holy Spirit just impressed, go share the good news with him. Wow. He's hurting. And I remember pulling over, went into the, to the cemetery, yeah. and there he was. He had a lawn chair, and I seen a picture, introduced myself to him. And I said, who passed away? He said, my wife passed away about a year ago. She died in a car accident. And I just can't get over that I've lost my wife. But as he's saying this, he's crying, he's mourning. He's just really like dealing with a spirit of grief. And that's tough, losing your wife. And I began to share the good news. I said, Jesus came to heal that. Yeah. You're not going to forget about your wife. You don't have to deal with this grief where you're crying and, and, and depressed. Jesus can heal you. That's what Jesus did on the cross. I began to share the good news. And right there on that cemetery plot where his wife, he gave his life to Jesus. Power of God hit him because the power of God will always show up when we're sharing the good and news. You know, I, that, 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 that reminds Man. me of the story I think, uh, that of uh, my, my friend um, um, Tumo in the car business, mm. and his mother was in the Marino Valley Hospital, mm. um, and she was in a coma wow. for a long time. And the doctors told her, I mean him, that his mom was going to die wow. within 48 hours or something like that. And then he goes, he goes, Marco, my mom is not saved because I led, wow. I led him to the, led Lord, to the Lord at the Lord. job. Wow. And he goes, my mom doesn't know Jesus. She's not saved. And I know if she dies right now, she's going to be separated from God for eternity. Wow. He goes, would you, would you do me the favor of going to the hospital and, and speaking to my mother? She's in a coma, but I mean, at least maybe her spirit's still here. Wow. I don't know. But maybe God could do a miracle with yeah. it, right? So I go, tomorrow I'll go. Yeah. So I went. And when I went, a miracle happened. Man. Because anytime you're carrying the gospel right. to save a soul, Spirit. see, I, I think we've got fascinated with miracles. Yeah, exactly. And, exactly. and I think we want miracles so we could show off how powerful That's we are. Right. That's so it's right. turned into like, I'm a prophet, or I'm an apostle, and I'm a Man. healer, and I'm a miracle worker, I'm a faith healer. That's not the issue here. No. Jesus is the Savior. Yeah. That's the most important thing. And, and he'll use miracles to build faith. He'll use miracles to get people to save in faith. Yeah. But that's the most important part. That's We're all going right. to die one day, and, that's, right. and that's just life. But right. the question, are you saved? Right. So I went in there to that hospital, Marino Valley, i never forget. Yeah. I walk in there, and he told me her name. Wow. And, I, and I said, hello, my name is Marco. And I said, hi. And I said her name. And when I said her name, her eyes opened up. Wow. And when her eyes opened up, I go, do you hear me? Do you understand me? I go, hold my hand. And she held my hand. And I go, grab it if you understand what I'm saying. She grabbed it. I go, I'm ready to share the most important message you've ever heard. Wow. And it's the message of Jesus Christ, how he died for your sins, how he was buried and resurrected from the dead so you could have eternal life. Right now, 
This is your moment. Yeah. The Bible says whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. And if you were to die right now, you're not ready. So we're going to pray to make sure you make peace with God. Yeah. She, I said the prayer. And I go, repeat it in your mind. And she repeated it. I go, did you say it? And she'd hold my hand. And so, and then after all it's done, she gave her life to Jesus. I go, you are saved. Congratulations. Yeah. Heaven is, is celebrating. As soon as I left, she went right back to sleep. And she died within hours. Wow. But she, she now, I'm going to see her in heaven, in heaven. with a, with a three-minute prayer right. with the right message. We have been preaching all kinds of stuff, but it's time for us to get the gospel yes. back in our mouths, yes. the gospel back in our churches, the gospel back in our homes. Yes. People are going to church, ain't saved. Not even saved. That's scary. You know, I'm, I'm talking scary. about in our own homes. That's scary. And they don't even know what the gospel no, is. They don't know what the gospel is. The good news, what is it? Jesus came. He died on the cross. Died for your sins. He was buried. He was raised to life to give us eternal life. How do we walk in the supernatural power of God, you guys? One, let's be available. Two, let's preach the good news. Here's number three. Last thing. Rely on the finished work of Christ. Rely on the finished work of Christ. The power of God, the miraculous, thank God. I think I said it before. It's not on me. It's not on the person that I'm praying for. It's not that I kept the best commandments this week. God's just going to use me. It's what Jesus did on the cross. It's what Jesus did on Calvary. And the Bible kind of explains that in Isaiah 53, 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Jesus did it. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed when my faith and our faith is in what Jesus did on the cross man we'll see the power of God show up people get saved people get healed it's on the finished work of Christ you know um, man I love in, that in this last portion of scripture we're talking about Christ yeah. and, and what he, he started in ministry here and he yeah. finished it on the cross yeah. after he resurrected from the dead. And then he, he empowered his disciples yes. with the power of his Holy Spirit yes. to go out there and do even do greater things that he did. Right. But in this portion of scripture, Matthew 4, 23 uh, or 24, it says that he healed them all. Wow. Yes. And then I, I started thinking about how come, well, sometimes we wow. pray and he don't heal them all. And then, and then, yeah. and, and then uh, the Holy Spirit just told me, he goes, well, he healed them all. And this was the reason yeah. he healed them all. So we would never, ever think that there was something that we could bring before him that he couldn't handle. That's right. So Jesus had to heal right. every That's one of them it, yeah. because there would never be a, a story. There's yeah. not a story in the Bible right. that they brought any condition right. that he couldn't handle. That's right. So the pur purpose of this is so we have faith in Jesus, Jesus. that he could heal everything anything. He could heal your marriage. He could heal your mind. He could fix your issues because our God can handle it all. I love that. Even the paralyzed. They brought the paralyzed. He was bringing them back and walk. Come on. Because there's not a condition that Jesus cannot handle. Come on. Give God some praise in your house. Bring some faith in your life right now. Jesus can handle it all. Even that crazy kid you got. I love that. Walking in God's power. We could just be here all night talking about oh, this. Yeah. How do you walk in his power? Be available. Number one. Be available. Go out. Talk to someone. Pray with someone. Pray for a coworker. Number two, preach the good news. Yeah. And number three, let's rely on the finished work of Christ. Amen. And maybe you're here tonight, Pastor, as people are watching. Um, if you could maybe lead them in a prayer of salvation. Maybe you're watching tonight. And you haven't made Jesus the Lord of your life yet. Maybe you have a condition. Maybe you're hurting tonight. Maybe you're broken. Jesus wants to deliver you tonight. He wants to give you peace. He wants to give you comfort. But above everything, he wants to give you salvation. So if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, this is the day. Jesus died on the cross so that you could be saved. Jesus died to forgive you of all your sins. Everything you've done, Jesus could just wash it away right now. 
when you put your faith in him. Pastor, maybe you could lead someone to Christ today, maybe someone watching, or maybe someone needs a breakthrough. Can you pray for them tonight? Well, let's just act like today is the only day you have left. Yes. Uh, because you don't know what tomorrow holds. The Bible says don't even brag about tomorrow because you don't even know if tomorrow's there for you. Mm. There's thousands of people that today, before it hits midnight, they're going into eternity. That's right. Some of them are eating dinner tonight, enjoying some company with some friends, watching a TV show. And the reality is they're going into eternity in a couple hours. There will be a day that you're going to go into eternity and you're going to have a couple hours left, a couple minutes left, a couple seconds left. And you might not even know it's your moment. The question is not whether you're going to die. The question is, will you live for eternity? Because we all will die. Right. And we just have to make sure we're prepared for that day. But while we're living on this earth, this is what I've realized that apart from God, there's an emptiness that we have in our lives that we can't, we can't get rid of. And that's why 165 million people are, are on some type of substance abuse. That's why depression is the number one cause of, of, of disability in the world. That's why fear is rising. Families are falling apart. I love you so much. If I love you so much, how come we can't make this relationship work? Because there's something missing within our hearts. It's, we're missing, we're missing the, the missing, the thing that can make us whole and the, or the person that can make us whole. I'm not offering you religion. Jesus said the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. What he's saying is, apart from Christ leading your life, then the thief is leading your life. And you feel like you're losing. You're not gaining ground. It's just destroying. Everything is, is falling apart. That's reality, apart from Christ. Is it how much money you got? There's still a deep down ache in your heart that only God can solve. You can't sleep at night. You're restless. You're thinking, I need to make more money, more money. How, it doesn't matter how much money you make, you're still empty. So there's still something missing. And what's missing is what Jesus says, I've come to give life in abundance, or I've come to give you a rich and satisfying, rich and satisfying life, or I've come to give you eternal life. Today's your day to place your faith in Jesus. Yes. Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. I'm not offering you religion. Jesus is the only one that died for your sins. You should have died. I should have died to pay the penalty for the wrong we've done, but he did it for us. He loves you that much. Then he conquered death. He's the only one that died and lived. Conquered death. Why? To give us life. Today you could receive, open your heart with the, little, with the faith you got. You don't need a lot of faith to take some action. Or maybe you need to recommit your life to the Lord. And you're saying, Pastor, I'm like feel, I'm far away from God. I walked away from God. That's okay. Let's walk back. I've messed up. That's okay. Jesus paid the price for your sins. Stop living under the guilt and the shame. So today's your day. I want everyone that's watching online, I want you to right now, bow your head and let's pray. Yes. Let's get in, in conversation with God. Receive Jesus as your Savior. Give Him your heart, your hurt, your pain, your loneliness. Give Him your aches. Give Him your life, your marriages, your relationships. Today's your day. Let's pray together. Repeat after me. Bow your heads, close your eyes. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, Jesus I, believe I believe that you died on the cross, on the cross for, my for my sins. You paid the price, you paid the price for, the for the wrong I've done. I also believe, I also believe that, you that you rose from the dead. You conquered, you conquered my, greatest my greatest enemy, sin and death. Sin and death. Thank, you, Thank you, Jesus. Forgive me, Forgive me for my sins. For my Forgive me for doing it my way. I surrender my heart, my life. I open my heart to you, Jesus. Come in. Be the Lord of my life. Be my king. From this day forward, I will live for you for the rest of my life. And fill me with your Holy Spirit. I'm a new person. Thank you, Jesus, for loving me dying for me, forgiving me, and giving me eternal life. I am saved in Jesus' name. 
If you said that prayer, let's go ahead and clap for you. I, I am so proud of you. If you said that prayer, raise your hand at home or because I meant it, I meant it, I meant it. And those around the house that are there, this is a time we want to activate yes. the power of God. And, and we've got to take action. So what we're going to do is sing one more song. But let's go ahead and make ourselves available. Now, if anybody needs prayer in the home, you're sick. Why don't we just go ahead and activate the power of Jesus Christ. Let's lay hands on you. We'll do our part and let God heal you. If you have a broken heart, you're going through something. You don't need to act like everything's okay. It's okay to be real. It's okay to say, hey, I'm going through something. I'm going through a struggle. I'm, financially, I'm struggling. God cares about all of it. He healed it all. He fixed, he's able to fix it all. Will you pray? Will you make your home, your car, your break room, a house of prayer or a place of prayer, a place where Jesus can move? So right now would be a time. Ask the people in your room. Does anybody have anything they want to pray for? Are you okay? Do you personally pray for anything? And let's surround them with the love of Jesus. And let's pray. And let, let's, let's let God do the miracle. We're going to sing this song one way through. And this is our time to pray. Let's pray. Thank you for the healings and breakthrough in people's homes and it's been a great night and just make ourselves available this week for God to move. Remember Easter's coming up. I think we're about six or seven weeks away. What are we doing for Easter? We're bringing one family. We're bringing one family to Easter and then right after Easter the following week is our marriage challenge. It could be the same, it could be the same couple. Yeah, we got some cards that we have. And if you come on Sunday, we have some cards to give out. We could pass them out. You could come by the office because, man, we're just going to go out and make ourselves available yeah. and watch God move. And you know, everyone can reach, one can reach one for 2021. 2021. So let's get ready. Easter's Resurrection Sunday, the day we, 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 we celebrate, yeah, celebrate the greatest day in the history of the world. So we have, we have some flyers for you. Yeah. On one side, it's inviting them to Easter. On the other one, it's marriage challenge. Our goal is to have two, well, actually 2,000 2, new couples that are going to be here working on their marriage for 30 days. This is a time of miracles. Let's bring in the harvest. God bless you. Remember this. If God's for you, there's nobody to come against you. And you go out there in Jesus' name and God promises, I'll be with you everywhere you go. Love you guys. See you Sunday, 9 and 11. God bless you. Have a great, great evening. God bless you guys. Have a great night.